Hi, welcome to the Visual Editor. This is a brief video to show you what it's about, how you can use it in your App Game Kit projects. It's designed to help you create your apps faster and easier. With its simple drag and drop interface, it takes away the guesswork when it comes to 2D object placement. So, without further ado, let's illustrate how it works using some graphics I've got from an older game called Snake Snacker. So first we'll create a new project. I'm going to choose a landscape orientation for the app. Make the screen bigger. So this is the area of the screen within the app. Uh, we have a media section here. This is the main window where your app is and outside of the app. Properties window here, toolbar and drop down menus. The first thing to do is to add some media into our project. So we can right click here and add a folder. I've got a folder here. There we go. These are the graphics from my old project called Snake Snacker. Now we have to set a base resolution. This is important because the visual editor takes the base resolution and works out how to use the graphics across different resolutions on different devices. So currently we've got it set to 960 by 460. We can change that. I'm going to change it to 1024 by 768. Okay, so now that is now the base resolution. You see the screen slightly change in its aspect ratio. The visual editor works in scenes. So this is currently scene number one. This is going to be uh, our title page. So if we get the title graphic from the media folder and drop it here, you can see that it fits perfectly because that's the size it was drawn at. Um, we can position it like that or we can just right click, scale to screen size and it will fit perfectly. See I, I slightly moved it there. So if I right click and lock it, I now can't move it and it's not going to be moved by mistake. And if we now go to a different resolution like 960 by 640, you can see it's rescaled the image, but we've got these borders on the left and right. And that's because it's kept the aspect ratio of the image, which is important. But really, when someone's running it on a device of that resolution, we maybe want to uh, do something with these borders, with these coarse white borders showing. There's two ways to do that. You can go to scene and go to scene settings. You can see the background is set to white. We could change it to black. So the black then makes it blend in better with the device. But again, I'm not too happy about that. Uh, so there's another way we can do this. Because we lock the background, if we right click and unlock it, we can now go to this property here called dynamic resolution. The dynamic resolution will resize the object no matter what resolution you're in to fit that screen res. But in this case, we want to turn it to false. And then this now allows us to scale perfectly to the size of the screen. Again, I could use scale to screen like so. Let's go back to 1024768 and 960. You can see it fits. We have lost our aspect ratio slightly doesn't matter too much we can still see it quite clearly if we wanted to keep that then maybe we'd single out all these objects as separate objects um, and position them appropriately for each resolution there's a quick demonstration that we're doing here uh, this is another resolution 1280 by 720 and because we've already set it to dynamic resolution false we can rescale for every resolution we want to um, there we go. That one fits because it's the same aspect ratio, 1.33, than the base resolution. OK, let's add scene number two. So we simply do create scene, and now we've got two scenes. We can go back to one and back to two, like so. This is going to be the main game scene. So I've got a backdrop here. Again, scale to fit. I'm in the base resolution. It's important you, you edit in the base resolution. You'll notice the background is blue. If we go to a different resolution, it's grey and I can't drag anything in. I can't do anything outside of the base resolution unless I've turned off dynamic resolution for that particular object. Let's go back to the base resolution. 
So we can add sprites in like this quite easily. And we can select an object, we can rotate, we can scale. If we didn't like what we did, we can undo the movement and the rotation and the scaling. We can right click, duplicate, make this one smaller. You can see that now that red one is above the yellow one. So we can change the ordering, we can move this one forward or send it to the front and now it's in front of that red one and that one. So you've got lots of control visually of what you're doing. We even have a grid system, so maybe you're doing a platformer or other type of game that requires tiled graphics. What we can do is set the grid size to the entity and snap the position and view the grid. So now when I move it, you can see it perfectly fits its own size in a grid. Okay, so if I duplicate that, we can see that you can nicely position things just as your graphics are set up to be. And you can quickly just turn off the snapping so you can freely move things around, rescale it again. Hide the grid. Other cool things you can do is you could take this sprite here and you could assign a colour to it. Let's take a red colour, well let's take a green colour and it will merge it in with that sprite. You can also change the alpha, so let's set it to 150 and it's slightly transparent now. If we look at the scene tab in the media manager you can see all the sprites I've added to the scene so far. We can also add text and edit boxes. Let's create a text object. Double click and we've got this text object here. You can see it's appeared in the scene. We change this to score and you can see the text updated. It's a bit dark so let's change the colour. And if you've got some fonts in your media folder, which I will add now, so if we go to add media, we can select a font. I've got a font I've downloaded off the internet. And now this font, rainy days, can be used. It's that simple. We can rescale position where we want the score to appear. When I first wrote Snake Snacker, the code actually self-populates the sprites on the screen. So it creates the sprite in the routine and it randomly places sprites down. So really the visual editor wouldn't be used for these particular sprites. It would be used for the backdrop, the uh, logos, the text and other areas. Which, when I did the game, I had to position manually in code and it was very time consuming and I wasn't too sure what it, how it would look on different resolutions. So this is the main benefit of a visual editor. Let's just quickly add a third scene, which is going to be the game over scene. Again, we can just position it like so. There we go. So now we've got three scenes. We've got the main menu, we've got the game scene, we've got the end scene. If you want to try your project in App Game Kit itself, you click this button here, and here we are. This is our project, Snake Snacker. We'll see how it's created the code for you automatically. There are a number of functions that allow you to access the sprite, text, and edit boxes that you've added during the setup in the visual editor. So we'll just quickly run this, it will just show the first scene. Okay. This is where you need to start coding within this loop here to access everything else. So jump back to the visual editor. To find out more information you can go to the user guide, the PDF, and this details everything about the visual editor and you'll learn a lot from reading through the whole of that. Okay, so that in a nutshell is the visual editor. We're currently working on a Mac version and we're also adding new features like support for sprite sheets and other great features which will be coming very soon to anyone that's purchased the product, they'll get an automatic update on Steam or through the TGC servers. So I hope this introduction has helped. If you've got any questions, contact us on the forums 
and we'll continue to evolve and improve the visual editor as we move along. Thank you.